Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Hello Internet, and welcome to my top 10 list for 2012. This also just happens to be my 200th video, a bit of a milestone, and what better way to celebrate than with my slightly unconventional top 10 games of the year. Now, these are not the top 10 games that were released this year. They're not the top 10 AAA games. They're not the top 10 indie games. They're the top 10 games that I enjoyed this year. Fact of the matter is, a game doesn't even have to be released in 2012 to actually make this list. At least one game was in fact released in 2011, and I just barely missed a game that was released in 2010. If I played it this year and I enjoyed it, I don't care what year it was released, because this is all about the games that I played and loved this year. I'm going to dispense with the normal pleasantries and my usual flapping off at the mouth and get right down to things because we've got a lot of games to cover and a special announcement at the end of this video. So let's get right into things. Let's start things off with a game that wins two awards here, two awards that are in fact quite opposite from one another. This is my honorable mention, aka the game that just missed making the top 10 list, and it's my most disappointing game of 2012. So what game could possibly garner both of these honors? Darksiders 2. Now, don't get me wrong, I loved this game. That's why it's getting an honorable mention. I bought it day one, paid full price for it, a rarity for me, and I think I got my money's worth. I really, really liked it. No question about that. It was in my top 10 list until it was eventually displaced by the game that sits at number nine right now. So that's why it's an honorable mention. Why is it the most disappointing? Well, it's not the sequel that I wanted, and I think more importantly, it's not the sequel that I feel the series needed. Darksiders 1 sets up a very specific scenario that needs to be resolved. With the recent troubles at THQ and Joe Mad's departure from Vigil, we don't even know if we'll see that particular scenario resolved at all. So I was really hoping for more. I was hoping for a, a payoff to the finish of Darksiders 1, and that's not what I got. Instead, what I got was a very solid game that focused more on platforming than combat, and I had a good time in the end. I just wish that I got to see that payoff, the horsemen together fighting against the hordes, but it was not to be, and perhaps now it will never be. I suppose we'll see. Maybe this time next year we'll be talking about Darksiders 3 and its position on my top 10 list. And now with that appetizer out of the way, it's on to the main course. Here are the top 10 games that I enjoyed during 2012. Number 10, Borderlands 2. It's everything you loved about the original turned up to 11. New characters and new skills to unlock and master, and a whole hell of a lot of content, not to mention one of the best villains of the year. Handsome Jack in all of his diamond steed riding glory really helped to push this game over the top, and it's the reason that this is my number 10 game of 2012. Number 9, Chivalry. It's online multiplayer medieval melee mayhem done right. There's nothing more exhilarating than running down a hill my belly hook at the ready, leaping into the air, letting out a battle cry, and eviscerating some poor mason who just happened to be in my path. This is one of only a handful of games to ever really get first person melee combat right. Three different types of swings allow you to choose the exact attack for the situation, and it actually reveals a lot of strategy that's underneath what seems like a lot of people just flailing away with swords and spears and arrows. I've only had the game a matter of weeks, but there was absolutely no question after the first few days that this was going to make my top 10 of 2012. Number 8, Tribes Ascend. In a year without XCOM Enemy Unknown, I think Tribes Ascend would have been a shoe-in for anybody's Revival of the Year award. This is a revival of a series that is near and dear to my heart, and I have to say that they really knocked it out of the park. I put a lot of time into this game earlier in the year beta testing and then playing over the summer during its release, and I don't regret a single moment. One of the only free-to-play games I've ever actually spent real money on, and it was well worth it. Though my interest has waned in the later part of the year, this was definitely one of my top games of 2012. Number 7, 
Saints Row the Third. Call it 2012's 2011 Game of the Year if you'd like. It was released in November of 2011 after all, but I just call it a damn fun time. I didn't encounter this game until about halfway through the year, and once I did, I was hooked. From the co-op multiplayer to the engrossing single-player experience, this game was nuts in all the right ways. Completely off the charts, crazy in places, but just a roller coaster ride of fun. Exactly what I want from an open-world GTA-style game. In fact, I think Saints Row the Third is so good at what it does and I'm not going to call them GTA-style games anymore. I think Saints Row has officially ascended to the top of the open-world throne. And that's why it was one of the games that I enjoyed playing the most during 2012. Number 6. Gotham City Imposters. I think this game was one of the hidden gems of 2012, a title that took the tropes of the FPS genre and tried to turn them on their ear. Yeah, you know, you've still got killstreaks and perks, tiered weapon unlocks and mods to slap on them, but in many cases those weapons are homemade or cobbled together. They don't shoot bullets, they shoot ball bearings. You've got giant guys flying around on gliders. You've got skinny little dudes jumping around with spring shoes. You've got gnomes with tasers and so much more. It's an irreverent take on the FPS genre. And again, one of the games that I think was far too overlooked. Luckily, a free-to-play conversion meant that a lot more folks have now seen it on Steam and you can still get regular full games to this day. And I think that says a lot for a game that was generally panned upon release. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't an innovative game in any sense. It takes the existing first-person shooter tropes and washes a veneer of uniqueness over them, but it's more than enough to make for an amazing experience. If you haven't played this game, it is free on Steam, so you have no excuse. Number 5. A Bobo's Big Adventure I really don't have the words to describe this amazing love letter to the Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm just the right age to really be attached to almost every game that is lampooned and parodied in this wonderful free-to-play game. If you really need to know my thoughts on Abobo's Big Adventure, you haven't watched my Let's Play that I did earlier this year. This is the only game that I've Let's Played in the year 2012, so that lets you know that it's got to be something special. Number 4. A Virus Named Tom My time with Tom started during the beta test phase and I followed it all the way through to release. This is an at first deceptively simple looking puzzle game that peppers in just enough unique mechanics to make for an extremely fun and challenging game. Now if that was all that a virus named Tom brought to the table then it would probably be in my good but not great bin along with games like English Country Toon. But Tom also has both competitive and cooperative multiplayer a fun storyline, and incredible cutscene animations that really drove it over the top and made it one of my favorite games of 2012. Number 3. FTL For someone like me who was raised by video games and Star Trek, this was an absolute dream come true. Look, I'll put my cards on the table, alright? I'll get it out here right now. I'm a Picard guy, right? Picard over Kirk any day. I prefer the intellectual diplomat to the warrior. Luckily, FTL's brilliant design, its mashup of roguelike elements with space combat and micromanagement of systems and crew, never makes you choose one over the other. So no matter where your allegiance lies in the world of the Trek, you can always find a balance and you can always have fun. Gung-ho warriors will kirk it up with the best of them, and those of us who prefer a bit more of a diplomatic approach can do just that by running away from almost every battle we see. Number 2. Planetside 2 At this point, my actual memories of having ever really played Planetside 1 are gone. Lost forever to the ether. So it's not a nostalgic thing for me when I pick Planetside 2 as my number 2 game of the year. The reason that Planetside endeared itself to me is because it gave me exactly what it promised. Gigantic battles on a planet-sized scale. Yes, overcoming the learning curve may seem a little bit like having to climb Mount Everest Sherpalus, 
but it actually is an attainable thing. There are plenty of video guides out there, including guides commissioned by Sony, and there's a helpful community. I myself have brought at least three players into the game, look for friends who play, and ask them to tutor you in the ways of Planetside. And if you don't want to watch the videos or find a friend that can help you, just get in there and play. You will stumble into a battle of 50 plus people, lines of tanks going off to assault bases, airdrops that will blow your mind. I have had some of my favorite memories of 2012 occur in Planetside, even in the wee hours of the morning, hundreds of people sieging a single base. It is just a fantastic game, free to play at its very best. Number 1. The Walking Dead This was the single most emotionally affecting game that I have ever played. Long after my interest in the comics and television show had waned, the Walking Dead game brought me back into a universe which was at once familiar and also brand new. The game opens just as the zombie apocalypse begins, and you're there to watch the world turn to complete shit. Things go from grim to grimmer very quickly. There are no easy decisions in this game. Whether you're choosing who gets fed in your group or who to save from a zombie ambush, you will agonize over every single click of the mouse. While The Walking Dead was no doubt a triumph of brutal, visceral storytelling, it wasn't without its flaws. It was light on actual gameplay, even for a point and click, and I do have to say that some of my least favorite moments of this game were the times when it actually asked me to play it like a game, aiming a gun or trying to do an action sequence. There was also a major bug on the PC causing people to completely lose their saved games and all of the choices that had been made that created a particular narrative for them. I was lucky enough to never experience that, but I know of at least a couple of people who did, and in at least one case, it was enough of a heartbreak so that they never came back to the game. Ultimately though, clunky gameplay and a few bugs did nothing to diminish my enjoyment of this game. The fact of the matter is that I knew from the end of episode 3 that The Walking Dead was going to be my game of the year. After years of perfecting the point-and-click genre, Telltale has finally stumbled onto a formula which I think manages to convey a visceral and emotional story with minimal gameplay in a way that no one has ever managed to do before. In my opinion, this is a watershed moment for the point-and-click genre. I think The Walking Dead will stand as a monument to what this genre can and should be going forward. And while I think traditional point-and-clicks will surely still exist, I believe that we will see some of the best story-based games assuming a style much the same as what Telltale has done here in The Walking Dead, my 2012 Game of the Year. There you have it, that is it, the top 10 games that I enjoyed playing during 2012. Well folks, it's been a pretty damn good year here at Big Dave is Cheap, and despite the fact that we're technically on a hiatus, I think we're finishing it really strong. The free-for-all, the top 10, I think we're doing pretty damn good. As I mentioned earlier, this also happens to be my 200th video. Kind of fitting that we'll end the year on that, but I also thought that we should celebrate 200 videos with a massive giveaway. I've got a lot of game codes sitting around from previous bundles that I've purchased, and I've got a lot of inventory in my Steam library that's just sitting there unused, gift codes that are just hanging out, wanting a home, and I want to give those to you. So if you're interested in helping these undeservedly neglected games actually get played for once, then I need you to head over to BigDavisCheap.com and check out all the information in the post right there on the page. I'm doing this out of the kindness of my heart in the spirit of the season, the spirit of giving. I want to share with all of you who have made it 200 great videos here on Big Dave is Cheap. Thank you for everything, thank you for subscribing, thank you for watching. If you've ever liked a video or commented, I owe you a big sloppy kiss right on the mouth. And I think on that note, it's time to call it a video. This has been number 200, this has been my top 10 list for 2012, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.